Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Pelton calls Air Venture 2018 a near perfect event. Stratos Aircraft introduces the Stratos 716. And NASA assigns crews to first test flights and missions on commercial spacecraft. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's August 6, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Air Venture Oshkosh 2018 set new attendance records and drew more than 10,000 aircraft, according to the final figures released by EAA. A perfect event may be unattainable, but Air Venture 2018 came about as close as one could imagine, said EAA Chairman Jack Pelton. The event drew approximately 601,000 people, nearly 2% above 2017's record total. EAA members and aviation enthusiasts attended in large numbers, even without the presence of a military jet team, as we had in 2017. Our efforts to create unique attractions and aviation highlights across the grounds were incredibly successful, Pelton said. Attendance on opening day was the best in our history, as the vast majority of our guests came to Oshkosh early and stayed throughout the week. More than 10,000 aircraft arrived at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh and other airports in East Central Wisconsin. At Whitman alone, there were 19,588 aircraft operations in the 11-day period from July 20th to 30th, which is an average of approximately 134 takeoffs and landings per hour. There were 2,979 showplanes at the show, a second straight year over 2,900. Those included 1,160 home-built aircraft, 1,094 vintage airplanes, 377 warbirds, 185 ultralights and light sport aircraft, 75 seaplanes, 22 rotorcraft, 52 aerobatic aircraft, and 14 hot air balloons. After the break, One Week Wonder Project at AirVenture attracted more than 2,500 volunteers. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Joan Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The One Week Wonder Project, where a complete plane was built from start to finish within seven days, returned to EAA Air Venture Oshkosh after 2014 and counted, according to first indications, more than 2,500 participants. The requirements were similar. Volunteers, along with EAA staff, had to show how to build, inspect, and ground test a private aircraft by the end of the seven-day convention. The selected aircraft for this year's One Week Wonder Challenge was an RV-12IS, donated by Vans Aircraft. TSA is molding a plan that would eliminate security checkpoints at at least 150 small airports, opting to screen those passengers after they arrive at a larger airport. The idea is not a new one. It was first proposed by TSA two years ago and was blasted by critics as an attempt by the agency to coerce Congress to increase its funding. The United States Parachute Association Board 
has selected museum trustee Dr. Mike Horan as one of three recipients for his Gold Medal Emeritus Service, awarded to individuals who have made significant contributions to the skydiving community. Dr. Mike Horan, D88-1, served on the USPA board as Mideast Conference Director from 1979 to 1986. It was a key figure in organizing the USPA Nationals in 1979 and 1980. Bombardier Commercial Aircraft has announced that its 90-passenger Q400 aircraft configuration has received a certification from Transport Canada, becoming the first in-production commercial turboprop in the world to reach that capacity. The 90 c configuration represents another step in Bombardier's continuous improvements of its Q400 aircraft. Other improvements under development include a 2,000-pound increase in payload capacity, an escalation of A-check and C-check intervals with 606,000 to 808,000 flight hours. Well, that's it for today's Sherp Around the Patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Stratus Aircraft has introduced an update on its VLJ program and introduced the Stratos 716 model. The Stratos 716 is an evolution of the 714 proof-of-concept aircraft. When we introduced the proof-of-concept aircraft last year, the marketplace feedback was tremendous, says Stratos CTO Karsten Sundin. It was clear that the market is looking for the performance and comfort we are offering, but in a true six-place aircraft. We have achieved this with the 716. The Strato 716 has a 31 inch longer and 3.5 inch wider cabin than the 714 proof of concept aircraft, introduced at Oshkosh in 2017. The Strato 716 is a multi role VLJ designed to comfortably seat six people to support personal, business, and air taxi use. The Strato 714 test aircraft has completed 130 test flights and logged 185 hours. The all-carbon fiber 716X features trailing link gear, is powered by a Pratt & Whitney JT1 5D5, and is configured with dual G3X screens, GTN 750 MFD integrated Garmin Autopilot, dual standby altitude indicators, custom switch panels, fully automated pressurization system, and air conditioning. The Strato 716X kit will be comprehensive and include a Builder's Assist program. Stratus Aircraft has invested significantly in facilities totaling over 41,000 square feet in Redmond, Oregon, to support the production of the Strato 716. After these messages, NASA assigns crews to first test flights and missions on commercial spacecraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. NASA introduced to the world on Friday the first U.S. astronauts who will fly on American made commercial spacecraft to and from the International Space Station, an endeavor that will return astronaut launches to U.S. soil for the first time since the Space Shuttle's retirement in 2011. Today, our country's dreams of greater achievements in space are within our grasp, said NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. This accomplished group of American astronauts, flying on new spacecraft developed by our commercial partners, Boeing and SpaceX, will launch a new era of human spaceflight. Today's announcements advances our great American vision and strengthens the nation's leadership in space. The agency assigned nine astronauts to crew the first test flight and mission of both Boeing's CST-100 Starliner and SpaceX's Crew Dragon. NASA has worked closely with the companies throughout the design, development, and testing to ensure the systems meet NASA's safety and performance requirements. The new spaceflight capability provided by Boeing and SpaceX will allow NASA to maintain a crew 
of seven astronauts on the space station, thereby maximizing scientific research that leads to breakthroughs and also aids in understanding and mitigating the challenges of long-duration spaceflight. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.